This is part 3 of my talk about how to display arenagram. In part 1 I gave an introduction and in part 2 I showed a quiz uh, with questions designed to demonstrate why correct display of the arenagram is important. I, I hope that you found that useful and that the answers to the questions in that quiz will inform what constitutes a good display. So in part 3 I'm now going to explain what a good display should include and show how to achieve this. For good renogram display curves should be shown in colour. That's important to unambiguously identify left and right kidneys which is vital for correct reporting. If you took part in the quiz in part 2 of this talk you will appreciate that the vertical axis should be percentage of administered activity not just counts per second because that gives an indication of absolute function. The questions in the quiz clearly show that if you just display counts per second you have no idea whether the overall function of a kidney is good or bad. Also from the questions in the quiz I hope you'll appreciate that if you use the same axis scale for all studies, that is, you don't change the maximum on the axis from one study to another, and I chose the example of 15% maximum on the vertical axis and 40 minutes maximum on the horizontal axis, but you can choose whatever values are appropriate for the studies in your own department, as long as you're consistent. The reason for that is that it makes comparison of serial studies easy, because all readinggrams are shown on the same scales. That should have become clear from the examples that I showed during the quiz. It's also important to show essential details clearly. Obviously, the patient name, their identification, the date of the study should be shown but also important functional results. The relative function of the left and right kidneys, possibly the percentage uptake under two or three minutes, and the time to peak. And additional processing details may also be needed by the nuclear medicine staff. Now the gamma camera images are really only a means to see where the kidneys are. We use them to draw regions of interest, and from that we generate activity time curves. But it's the curves that are the important result of the renogram, so it's important to display those correctly. But nevertheless, radiologists like to see images, and so it's usual to include some sort of images within the renogram results display. However, there are too many images in the dynamic study to show them all. Uh, if there's one image every 20 seconds, there may be more than 100 images in a typical renogram, and you can't display all of those on a static screen such as a picture archiving system. So it's usual to create a series of representative summed images from the whole study. These needn't be equally spaced. For example, early on in the renogram, when things are changing quickly, we may want one image every three minutes. But later on, when things are changing more slowly, every 10 minutes will be sufficient. However, they must all be of the same duration, for example, all 3 minutes, rather than some of 3 minutes, some 5 minutes and some 10 minutes duration. Otherwise, the total counts in each image won't be comparable. So here's an example. Uh, the first image is from 0 to 3 minutes, and the next one from 3 to 6 minutes. So those are each 3 minutes duration. Uh, with no gap between them when things are changing fairly quickly. But then we leave a gap and the next image is from 7 to 10 minutes and then we leave another gap and the next one is from 17 to 20 minutes. So the duration of each image is the same so they can be compared. When the computer displays these summed images it's important that they're properly scaled. If the summed images are created as a series of separate statics like these four from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15 and 20 to 25 minutes, then the computer may easily display each one with the upper level of each image set to its own maximum. In other words, it looks at the highest count in each image and sets the black level to be that count. Looking at these images, it gives the impression that the kidney empties rather slowly because the blackness doesn't decline very rapidly and indeed the liver uptake appears to increase because it gets blacker towards the end of the study. However, if we look at the renogram curves 
we see that actually both kidneys empty pretty well and the counts have gone down very low by the end of the study. That's a different impression to what we get from the images. And we realize that the problem here is that as the bladder empties at the end of the study, the maximum count in the last image is much lower than the maximum count in the first image. But because that's been set to the upper level of black, uh, it makes the kidneys look blacker than they really ought to. So the solution is to make sure that the upper level of each image is set to the same maximum. Find the maximum in all of the images and use that to set the upper level that corresponds to black for all of the images together. That shows the true picture where the blackness of the kidneys declines in line with what we see in the curves. And indeed, the fact that the liver appears to get blacker is just an artifact of the change in the upper level. So that's something to watch out for when your computer displays a series of summed images. That leads on to something else which I call an interrupted renogram. Quite often the patient needs to go to the toilet during a renogram acquisition, particularly if a diuretic has been given. And as long as that happens after 10 minutes from the start of the renogram, then I believe it's okay to let them get off the camera and go to the toilet. However, keep the gamma camera acquisition running so the camera is still acquiring images even though the patient isn't there. Then when they return from the toilet, put them back in as close to the same position as possible and keep running the renogram acquisition until the normal end of the study at 30 or 40 minutes. Then after the renogram is finished, you can review the images and if you didn't quite manage to return them to exactly the same position, there will be a jump in the position of the kidneys when they got back from the toilet. But you can use realignment software to shift the images to put the kidneys back in the same position so that they will remain within the same region of interest when you come to process the study. In that way you can process and display the renogram curve as normal and the curve should then just leave a gap in the curves. We can see here that the patient disappeared to the toilet between about 18 and 20 minutes. But during that time the green curve for the bladder came down naturally because they emptied the bladder but the blue curve for the left kidney and the red curve for the right kidney can be joined up continuously and you can see what it would have been had they not had to go to the toilet. So continuing the acquisition while the patient's not there enables you to produce one continuous curve despite the renogram being interrupted. Let's look at the recommendations from the different published guidelines about how to display the renogram. The International Scientific Committee of Radionuclides in Nephro-Urology, ISCORN, produced a consensus report uh, on processing and display of the renogram as long ago as 1999. In it, they say that the renogram curves may be expressed in counts per second. But as I showed in the quiz in part two, that gives no idea of absolute function. Counts per second are not at all helpful if you want to know whether the function is good or bad. Moreover, they say that scaling on the y-axis should be based on the highest peak count. But again, as I showed in the quiz in part two, changing the y-axis each time is very confusing if you want to compare serial studies. So those are two recommendations from ISCORN which I totally disagree with and I hope if you went through the questions in my quiz you will agree that those aren't very helpful. The Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging in America and the European Association of Nuclear Medicine produced joint guidelines in 2018 but unfortunately they don't say anything at all about how to display the results of the renogram. But the British Nuclear Medicine Society guidelines say it is helpful to display the curves as a percentage of the injected dose and the scale used should be consistent from one study to another. So if you are convinced by the demonstrations in the quiz then those are the best guidelines to follow. So here's an example of a display. This display actually comes from the Renogram Processing and Display program which I wrote myself and so naturally it follows all the principles that I've just explained. <laughs> 
At the top, we have the patient and study details, the patient name, the study name, and the date of the test. Then we've got some regions um, and curves um, in the same color. Here, blue for the left kidney, red for the right kidney, green for the bladder. The regions of interest, uh, the curves, and the key in the same color identifying which of is which. The, uh, they're shown superimposed on a region of interest to see where they've been drawn, and the left and right are unambiguously marked so we can be certain that they've been drawn on the correct side. Here they're in color, but in case we produce a black and white copy of this, uh, we've also tried to use solid and dashed lines to separate the two curves as well in case they only get reproduced in black and white, but color is far better. The vertical scale is percent of activity, not counts per second. As I explained in part two, that's really important for getting an idea of the absolute uptake. I have used a fixed vertical scale that's 15% for all renograms so that it's easy to see at a glance whether the uptake is poor or good because the vertical scale is always 15% on a maximum for MAG3. The only time when it will go above that is if we have a renogram curve that for any reason goes above 15% and then we double it up to 30% but we don't choose any other arbitrary values. If the bladder curve happens to go above 15%, we don't worry about that, we just let that go off the top. The horizontal axis has a fixed time scale at 40 minutes for our renograms because that's the maximum time that we have. So even though this renogram only went on for 20 minutes, um, the scale still shows 40 minutes so that we've got a consistent pattern from one study to another. Here we've got the summed five minute images, all display scale to the same maximum so that we can interpret those properly. And we've got some key functional results. Here we've got the relative function and left and right kidneys as a percentage. We've got the uptake as a percent at two minutes and at three minutes. So these figures are read from the graph. So for example, at two minutes, there's 2.8% in the left kidney and 1.5% in the right kidney. Those give some sort of indication of absolute function that we can compare from one study to another. And then we've also got the time to peak, three and a half minutes for the left kidney and 18.2 minutes for the right kidney. These other figures down here are processing parameters that are used by the nuclear medicine department to check that the processing has been done correctly. So the benefits of a good display are that it's easy to take everything in at a glance. If you follow those principles, you can easily say whether the renogram shape is normal or abnormal. Is the uptake good or bad? Is the elimination normal or abnormal? And has there been any change since the last time? Because the scales are the same from one renogram to another, it's easy to see any change in this pattern. The biggest benefit here is for staff who aren't nuclear medicine specialists. It enables them to understand the results because they can just use pattern recognition without having to read the numbers off the scale. We can easily teach nuclear medicine people to look at the numbers, but the referring clinicians who receive our reports um, aren't so easily educated, so we have to rely on pattern recognition. And if we stick to consistent scales, then they can associate the words good uptake in a report with a curve that goes to the top of the scale and poor uptake with a curve near the bottom of the scale. However, if the computer display always scales every curve so it always goes to the top of the scale, then they can't make that association and they can get confused by changing scales. So the display of the renogram forms part of the renogram report and it's what the referring clinicians judge the nuclear medicine test by and if they understand it they will get confidence in the results. So that's the end of part three. In part four I'll describe how to quantify absolute kidney function.